Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. In this video, we're gonna talk about chemical bonding, three different types of chemical bondings. So go get your notes, go get something to write with in a highlighter. There might be some things that we need to add to your notes or there might be some things you need to highlight in your notes. This is how we become successful at chemistry, taking notes in class, going back through your notes, and I'm gonna help you go back through your notes. By the end of this video, you're going to know all about ionic bonds, Covalent bonds, there's two types, polar covalent, non-polar covalent, and lastly, metallic bonds. So let's get started. Chemical bonds, they're just the glue that holds atoms together. Now we know that a compound is made out of two or more elements that are stuck together. That is a chemical bond, that sticky stuff that holds elements together. And there are three types of chemical bonds, ionic, covalent, metallic, and it all has to do with how the elements interact with each other's valence electrons. Let's talk about each one of them more specifically. An ionic bond transfers electrons. Electrons are transferred. I always like to say that it steals electrons because it's going to occur between a positive metal, a cation. That's right, metals, they're always going to be positive and they're always going to be cations. Non-metals are always going to be negative. They're going to be anions. They're opposite charge. Coulomb's law says opposites attract. And so the force of attraction that causes those positive and negatives to join together, that is an ionic bond. When opposites attract, that forms a very strong bond. Now, if we were looking at an electronegativity chart and we took two elements and we subtracted them to get the difference, if the number was 1.7 or larger, we could classify this as an ionic bond. Here's a couple of examples. Lithium chloride, which is made out of lithium and chlorine. Lithium being a metal, chlorine being a non-metal. Or calcium fluoride. Ca calcium, that's a metal. Fluorine, that's a non-metal. So since ionic bonds transfer electrons or steal electrons, very strong bond. Covalent bonds share electrons. Sharing is very nice, but sharing isn't so strong. Covalent bonds, not quite as strong as ionic bonds. Co means we're gonna share. A co-manager, those are two managers sharing the responsibility of manager. Our co-ed, we've got boys and girls both sharing the same dorm building. We're sharing, sharing electrons. Now, this type of bond forms between two non-metals and it forms due to an electrostatic force. Now there's two types of covalent bonds, polar covalent, non-polar covalent. The difference is, is how they share electrons. Polar covalent, one element is stronger than the other, slightly more electronegative. So remember, electronegativity is the ability to attract electrons. So that element is gonna pull the other elements, electrons closer to itself. You know, like when you try to share your favorite genes with your sister and she keeps them five days out of the week and she just tries to give them to you two days of the week, that's not very fair. That's very unequal sharing. That's like a polar covalent bond. And if we were to get those two elements that make a polar covalent bond and look at an electronegativity chart, and subtract those numbers, the difference would be somewhere between 1.7 and 0.4. That would tell us you have a polar covalent bond. Two examples are H2O, yes, that's water. Water is polar. Does that sound vaguely familiar from biology? And NH3, NH3 is also a polar bond. You might not recognize NH3, but that's ammonia. That might sound familiar. So it's going to have poles slight attractions on either side. That's why it's called polar. Nonpolar has no poles, no attraction, because it's equal sharing. The two elements share the electrons equally. And so if we were to look at the electronegativity chart and subtract those two elements, the difference would be somewhere between 0.4 and zero to be considered a nonpolar bond. So the most common nonpolar covalent compounds are the diatomic molecules. And that's because they're the same element bonded together, so their electronegativity difference is zero. Here are a few examples. CO2, that's carbon dioxide. And then the bond that happens between carbon and hydrogen, which is in just about every organic molecule. Or here's an example of a diatomic molecule, I2. Two of the same element bonded together. 
metallic bonds. You know a metallic bond really isn't even a chemical bond because when we mix two metals together, it's a metal mixture. Remember alloys? Alloys was a metal mixture. Mixtures, that's a physical blend. No chemical bond is happening there. You still need those metals to kind of stick together somehow. That's what we call a metallic bond. Since all the metals in a metallic bond are cations, their valence electrons, they're just loose to flow around between all the metal nuclei. We call these the sea of electrons. And since those electrons can just flow from element to element, from atom to atom, that's what makes metals good at conducting electricity and heat. Also what allows metals to be malleable. In metals, their valence electrons become delocalized. So all the metal nuclei just share valence electrons. So now you know all about the three types of bonds, ionic, covalent, and metallic. Make sure you've subscribed so you catch the next video where I go more in depth about ionic and covalent bonds. That's what you really need to know. Until then, bye y'all.